YouTube. How's everyone doing? All well, I hope. Um, welcome to my first brew video. So, Homebrew Wednesday number two, a couple of weeks ago, I talked a little bit about uh, like planned next brews. Um, and I was toying with doing uh, a blonde ale for the summer, all that kind of stuff. And I also toyed and asked a few questions about doing a, um, like a partial extract kind of hybrid um, kit because I wanted to really try my hand at doing a double IPA um, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I've decided to skip the uh, Blonde Ale kit right now just because I really, really want to give this a go. I'm really excited by some of the stuff I've been reading, some of the stuff I've been seeing. So today I'm going to be brewing a double IPA. I'm going to be using some, uh, I'll show you the ingredients in a minute in a, in a separate video, but I'm going to use a mixture of liquid malt extracts, some brewing sugar, some uh, some grains, some some crystal uh, crystal malts that I've got. Um, Going to be doing a bit of a boil. Got some centennial hops to add for bittering, and then um, yeah, going to be bunging it all in the fermenter, going for a forty pint uh, batch, and see what happens. You know, um, I, I have no idea how strong this is going to be, but it's got a significant amount of. Uh, fermentables going in we've got a kilo of brewing sugar three and a half kilos of liquid malt extract so i'm anticipating it's going to be i don't know somewhere between seven and eight percent but i'll do a gravity reading uh, once it's all boiled up and um and got down to temperature before i pitch the yeast um just to see where we're at and kind of what what we're aiming for so um without further ado here we go so here's the ingredients for this evening's brew We've got a three and a half kilo pot of uh, liquid malt extract. That's a light one, so um, hoping it's gonna be nice and crisp, but just to add and darken the ale a bit, I've also got a kilo of uh, pale crystal malt. Probably gonna use about 500 grams of that, steeped for half an hour or so, 40 minutes. Um, and then in my new five litre boiling, uh, stock pot, which was a Amazon bargain, and then um, I'm gonna steep this for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and then probably do another half an hour boil um, after taking the grains out with a little bit of the um, liquid malt extract in, with some brewing sugar to add as well. Once it's all mixed up, just to try and bump up the ABV. I'm going for something pretty strong here. I'm not really sure. I haven't worked it out, but I reckon it's probably going to be close to. 8%, 7%, something like that. And then I'm um, gonna boil the centennial hops as well in there. Probably, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 grams of that in with the uh, the boil for 30, 40 minutes, just for bittering. The rest of that I'll probably add when I add the citra hops uh, for the dry hopping, just to really, really push up the hoppiness of this uh, experiment that we've got going and then the um, yeast that I'm using one of these ones I've seen quite a few people use this one already I think it should be pretty good so yeah um, we'll be back with some footage shortly of the actual process okay so this is my dirt cheap 10 litre um, stainless steel pan that I bought it's a stock pot off of Amazon I think it's about 12 quid uh, in there, I've got five litres of water. That's about where I want it to be in terms of temperature. I haven't got a thermometer, so I'm kind of eyeballing this, but it's not so much about extracting any of the um, sugar at this point because they're uh, roasted malts that I'm going to be putting in. It's more about just getting that flavour and that colour in. So, um, yeah. And in this little bad boy here, muslin bag, we have got. 500 grams of um, crystal, pale crystal malt, and it smells amazing. Um, so I'm planning on popping this in and steeping it for around about 30 to 40 minutes, just to really get you know all the color and everything out of there. Now this is the first time I've done anything with um, all grain, um, and it's also the only the third brew that I've ever done. So. Um, yeah, be interested to see how this comes out. It's a bit of an experiment, but hey, aren't the best things in life uh, kind of mishaps or mistakes or learning experiences? So in here, guys, this is the 
bag of crystal malt, 500 grams that we've had steeping now for half an hour. Just let that drain through a little bit. I'm going to pop this over and then I've got some uh, hot water that I'm just going to sparge it with a little bit of hot water just to make sure we rinse out some of that goodness. I'm not going to be doing any um, squeezing of the bag, not that I know the ins and outs of why that's not a great thing, but I've seen that it's not a great thing. So the water in this kettle is at 70 degrees. Just sparge that, there's about a litre there. Give that a little bit of time just to drain through, and then we're going to add in a little bit of the um, liquid malt extract from the malt miller as well and we're going to get that um, yeah, boiled up. I'm not going to add all of this in, probably only about a third of it. So this is the light liquid malt extract. That was actually a bit e uh, more difficult than I was expecting to pour in, so one-handed anyway. There we go, that should do, maybe another. Good splurge into there. Pop the lid back on that. And I want to give this a good mix because I don't want any of that to to the bottom. And I'll turn the heat right up. So it's taken a darn sight longer to get this going up to a boil than I was anticipating. Um, hey, warts and all brewing, right? Hopefully it's going to speed up and we'll get a nice rolling boil going shortly. I've had to move it onto a different ring because I think the one that I had it on just wasn't able to cut it. So there we go. It's taken about half an hour, but it is now just at a steady rolling boil. So we're going to chuck in this little hop bomb, 100 grams of Centennial, in we go, one, two, three. Okay, so the um, the, the grains, well the warts had uh, around about 40, 45 minutes now on a, a fairly slow boil. I'm a bit disappointed to be honest. Um, the I think the electric ring just isn't going to get hot enough, quickly enough to maintain a really steady boil, but nevertheless, hops have been in there for a good half an hour to 40 minutes. Um, I've just taken them out and um, I'm ready to now start transferring it all into the uh, fermenter bucket. So, uh, wish me luck.
down to about 24 it's been outside for a little bit just to cool it down um, I've had a read up on the website for these little bad boy yeasties um, so there's anything over 20 degrees temperature range 12 to 25 so it's at 24 it's only going to come down I think over the course of the next um, couple of hours so it should be absolutely fine so here we go happy yeasties Okay, so there we have it, 21 litres on the mark there. Oh, already getting a bit of airlock activity, but I think that's just where the temperature's still coming down. I've only just put the lid on. Um, but yeah, a little bit more of a faff than I was expecting, just to get the wort up to a boil. Um, definitely need to reconsider how I do that um, next time. Uh, and then getting the temperature down was a bit of a faff as well. But anyway, seems all good smells fantastic i'll be back in probably a week's time to do the dry hop and then um yeah see where we go from there all right anyway cheers guys take care morning guys so um just coming back to do my first uh dry hop edition with the citra pellets the the ipa has been in the fermenter now for what is it Monday, so Wednesday, five days um, still getting lots of fermentation. The Croizen belt is still up there. Um, but I was a little bit concerned that the hop addition that I put in with the boil wasn't going to be um, as potent as I was expecting. So did a little bit of research on how to up the bittering. And um, yeah, so I'm going to, I just found out adding a part of the dry hop a little bit earlier on might help with that. So I'm going to put in 30 grams of the citra pellets now. It's going to leave me with 70 grams to put in just before and move it on to bottling so I'll put some footage in a moment so yeah as you can see we've still got a really thick Croizen belt on here um, I don't know whether I'm adding these a little bit too early or not but hey it's all an experiment so here's my 30 grams of citra just gonna sprinkle these little bad boys in over the top See where we go from there it smells amazing so i'm quite quite confident that this is going to turn out to be a decent brew. so this is now the taste test sorry that uh if you were expecting a few more bits and pieces about some of the uh, hop addiction and bottling and all that kind of stuff just got carried away and didn't actually end up filming it like that. But there's loads of videos out there. I'm sure you'll be able to see how to bottle, all that kind of stuff. Um, over the course of the last few days of fermentation, I added in the uh, hops in two separate editions. Uh, one, two days after, and I think that was 30 grams as well. And then I had the last 40 gram edition uh, 
uh, literally the day before bottoming. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with this, but without further ado, let's crack one open. This isn't the first one I've had, as you might expect. Um, it's been in the bottle for three weeks now. I think I had the first one after about a week. This is just uh, the earliest I've got around to filming it. But anyway, cheers. So it's reasonably well carbonated. Good haze coming out of the bottle, and oh, straight away you get hit by the mango, passion fruit kind of flavours that the citra hops bring. And then pours out really nicely. It's well carbonated, as you can see. That's not my best pour, but anyway. And what I found as well is the USO5 um, yeast that I used obviously falls out. Um, I've actually found that if you mix the sediment back in, you get a better flavour. So maybe that's something for next time. But anyway, cheers everyone. I'm in love with this. So, tasting notes. You get a good, bitter finish. Could be a bit drier, but you get a decent bitter finish. The flavours you get, as well as the aroma, is all about tropical fruit. So you get passion fruit, a little bit of lime, and definitely mangoes in there. Um, it's almost like Rio, you know, the canned drink that you get. Um, it's got that kind of real tropical vibe going on, but the problem with that is it's deceptively drinkable. And it came out, I think, at about 7.88 um, it, it went all the way down to uh, 1.010, and it, yeah, it was. Um, it's definitely a strong beer. I've had a couple of these where uh, I've had a couple of beers before, and then thought it'd be a good idea to have one. And it's not. You need to treat it with a bit of respect. But needless to say, it tastes absolutely fantastic. My missus loves it as well, which is always good. It's nice to share a bottle with her. Uh, kind of middle of the week when you try and be reasonably good. So, like I said, it's had three weeks in the bottle. Um, it's it, I'm really, really pleased with the flavours that have come through. Um, going to try and drink it all relatively young because I don't want to leave it too long and let some of those flavours dissipate. A um, couple of things I do differently next time. Obviously, you saw that I had a few issues with the boil. But actually, I think next time I'm going to. Um, I'm already looking to get a gas burner to have down in the workshop so that I can do my brews down in the workshop using a gas um, a gas hob down there because it's just I'll be able to get the boil going much better and hopefully get a better result with those steeping grains. Um, I'll probably use a different yeast as I've already said for this, maybe like a, a white labs um, liquid yeast, one of the ones that stays suspended in the in the beer um, to kind of bring up that cloudiness, but I mean it is cloudy, but if you pour it straight out of the bottle without any um, mixing, like swilling in the bottle, it comes out really clear, so it's, it's better like this. And um, I think the only other thing is I can make more of it because I'm really in love with it. Um, I've given a few bottles out to people and it's gone down well with them, um, really, really well actually. So I'm looking forward to tucking into the rest and, like I said, hopefully bring some more over the course of the summer. Um, anyway, next up is going to be a wheat beer that I'm going to brew. Hopefully they'll start brewing that next week. But in the meantime, cheers everyone and have an amazing uh, week. <laughs>